Welcome back. So I've made a better drawing to actually illustrate what's going to happen in the next couple of lessons. And um, the first thing I want you guys to know, in at least in this series, we're going to make the unit of work now. That's the next big step for us. I want the unit of work up and running. But I'm also going to look at this later where we are going to make the customer. Right now we use this entity layer right here. I'm going to kill that within maybe the first couple of lessons in the next series and maybe in, or maybe in the end of this series because I do not feel that this is a good architecture to have this entity layer used across of all three layers at least. So the first step I think just to make it uh, more eatable, more edible and, and simpler to do is we'll start out by actually moving the customer. So we're going to have a customer business object and a customer entity object. And then we'll kind of move that over here within an upcoming lesson. So I'll just place it here for now and then we're going to move this guy away because I can live with this for now. And maybe we'll make this into two different objects as well. So we'll get a customer business object and a customer DTO here. But we'll talk about that later and we'll work with that later. So the last remaining things that I feel I should actually attack right now is the unit of work. So this lesson, let me try and show you why the unit of work would make sense in our application already. I'm going to stay on the Mac this time just to kind of give you Mac users something to look at as well. Um, we have the same setup here, just like I showed you, BLL, DAL, Entity and UI, just the same as we have here. And of course, inside those packages are the classes that I'm showing right here. So let's try and go into the data access layer right here and go into the repository and our fake memory thing, uh, sorry, our EF memory right here. Now, one thing I want you guys to notice right here is every time I do a create, I actually save something to the database. So every time I do a create. I cannot say I want to create five customers in a row and then save them to the database. That's not possible in my current system. Because every time I call this function, a method will be called to a database, a SQL query will be created, and I will actually save something in the real database. That's kind of annoying because in my system, I'm going to make something that can say maybe create five customers and then save them to the database all at once. It could be more complex things, but I think that's a very easy problem to understand. So the problem is right now that the context in here is being saved directly inside the repository and that's kind of what the unit of work is going to do for us. That's going to take this out of the repository and bring it into a unit of work that can then say execute, create for all the five customers and then save the changes. I'll show you what that means in the next couple of videos but now you guys kind of know one of the problems I want to solve here is I want to get the saved changes out of the repository and I want the unit of work to handle those save changes by actually adding unit of work right here that's going to have an iCustomer repository inside it and then the doll for set is going to call the unit of work that knows about the repository and then that knows about the database. I know it seems like a lot of structuring to get this up and running but you'll love it when you start working in bigger teams. If you do like a to-do app like you see in so many tutorials out there that's kind of useless when you start working in teams because they, the code just normally isn't that simple. To-do apps are very easy to do, but if you have something that's just a, with a bit more logic, a bit more business logic, this will start making sense. So see you in the next lesson where we'll actually try to implement the iUnit interface. Have fun.